Celebrating the baby boomer lifestyle. This is Boomer Life with Sterling Fox on AM 650. And we're back on Boomer Life talking retirement living with the folks from Revera Retirement Living, including Lydia Miller, who is Revera's uh, Regional Director of Sales for British Columbia. Hello. And joining us from the Dorchester in Kelowna is lifestyle consultant Therese Elvis. And we are now joined by Patrick Fagan uh, from a company called Act Together Moving Services. Hi, Patrick. Hey, Sterling. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Got a lot of questions for you, sir, but I have one, first of all, for or, uh, Therese, and this refers to a survey that you folks at Revera do constantly, relentlessly, with your with your uh, residents all across the country. Oh, yes. And uh, year after year, the finding is a stunning 97% uh, satisfaction survey from uh, residents at Revera. Uh, but they say, uh, almost unanimously, Lydia, and we've talked about this before, that um, the only regret is that I didn't move here sooner. Right. It, it's it, it's turned out to be a whole lot more than I had ever expected. And if I'd known it was going to be this much fun, Therese, I would have moved here a few years ago. Exactly. And this is a good follow-up for the comment that I made uh, a moment ago about the lady who decided to be proactive and not wait right. to, to move while she could enjoy everything to the fullest mm-hmm. and have the energy to uh, get involved in the dances and get involved in the recreation and the lawn bowling and the other things things that are going on. But lots of people, I think people who are doing jobs like mine at the other Rivera sites have heard the comment, I, gee, I wish I would have done this. If I'd known it was this much fun, exactly, yeah. if, if I'd realized there was nothing to fear and that I was not going to be losing my independence, in fact, I'm gaining my independence, I would have moved and should have moved uh, two years and sometimes three or four years ago. Well, Therese mentioned the key word, and that's independence, Lydia, mm-hmm. and that, and that's, and the fear, the fear yeah. of loss of independence. If I move to a, a retirement place, they're going to micromanage every living moment of every day. I'm going to have somebody telling me I got to go do this, and then I got to go do that, and I got to eat. Now I got to do something else, yeah. and and that's not that's not independence. That's being pushed around, that's and right. it's precisely the opposite. They want to keep control, just like they have for you know 70, 80 years, and we help them to do that. Right. They come and go as they please. They participate in the activities that they want. Or don't want they want to sleep in and not join for breakfast they're welcome to do that right okay patrick talk to us a little bit about act together moving services you and your sister actually have have, have the company together uh, which of you is on the island so my sister annie uh, runs our victoria operation okay so she helps people from you know the shawnigan lake area right through to oak bay uh, brentwood sydney and uh, then we grew it to White Rock, South Surrey, just uh, in, in 2013. Okay. So we've got, uh, uh, you know, but we help, we help folks all over the Lower Mainland with moves. And essentially, we, we help with the downsizing. Sometimes folks just need us to come in, help them get packed up. Other times, they're just starting their search. They haven't found their Dorchester yet. They're still, their eyes are wide open. And they're thinking, do I just need to move to a condo or... Can, could I actually enjoy life more by being in a, in a, in a retirement community? Oh, what, what? Has, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Lydia. Annie has helped us uh, on several occasions, you know, moving and transitioning uh, seniors right. that she's come across into one of my buildings, either Parkwood Place or Parkwood Court, and in particular the Kensington. Okay. And our, uh, what, sort of, what percentage of the business then, both here on the Lower Mainland and on the island, Patrick, is, uh, is taken up uh, serving seniors? Uh, and uh, particularly with retirement community needs. You know, that's about where we spend 90% of our time. Is that right? Yeah, eh? helping folks with that transition. Wow. And, uh, you know, their children would have the choice of taking several weeks off of work or uh, getting someone like us to get in there and roll up our sleeves. And quite often, though, it's, it's friends and family that are also... Pardon the pun here, but acting together in, in in accordance with their realtor, perhaps some tradespeople that are coming in to touch up things around the house so they can get a good price for their place. Right, of course, yeah. And uh, then, yeah, then we're thinking, what what's their lifestyle? What do they want? And and uh, then we're we're setting them up for that and making things fit into the new home. Therese, when people come to you at the Dorchester and they are clearly in need of some professional help, uh, just in terms of the stuff. Lots of us and lots of our parents have, well, a lifetime of accumulated stuff. Oh, yes. And not all of them are real keen to let go. Oh, no. So sometimes uh, this would become uh, a bit of a, uh, an argument point, a bone of contention. So when, when this becomes an issue, is it 
is, is it important to have access to a professional like Patrick to come in and explain uh, what, what happens to all that stuff? Oh, absolutely. When you can get somebody to uh, help someone sort uh, their stuff, and that's just really the only word you can use. We're for using it. George Carlin's word. <laughs> We're putting it in quotes every time, but we all know what stuff is. It's a lifetime of accumulation. Yeah, and, and it holds memories. us. It yeah. holds mm -hmm. us hostage. It really does. Uh, not just for seniors, but for all of us. Of we course. can all take inventory. I think you get so much. Sometimes you don't even know how much stuff you have, and uh, it just paralyzes you. You get um, overwhelmed by how to manage it. And yesterday in a workshop that. Lived and I were at, we talked about the elephant and how, how you eat it, and that's in small bites, mm -hmm. a bite at a time. So having somebody like Patrick who has the expertise to wade through that and doesn't have the emotional attachment to it the way the, the person that we're talking about has, um, it, it can be a, a much easier job than a person would think. So Patrick, how does it work? Uh, you, uh, you, you get a referral from, now you're in White Rock, mm -hmm. so uh, Rivera's community in White Rock is? Yeah, White Cliff. White Cliff. So, so let's suppose now some South Surrey resident, a senior, is interested in uh, moving to Wycliffe or one of the other communities in the Lower Mainland. Yeah, we but don't want to talk about them. They, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they've, uh, they've got a, a, a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So you get called to come in. So what would you do? Would you go to that person's home and have a look around and go, oh my gosh, you sure do have a lot of stuff. But then once that's ascertained, which will take seconds, how do you deal with the concerns of that individual or that couple about what to do with all that stuff. Well, you know, I, I'd say, great, they've, they've made the right decision. They're looking at a, a place with high standards like Whitecliff. And now what I'm going to get them to do is, is tell me about who they are. You know, what, what's kept them busy for their, their professional lives, you know, their children they've raised, the things that made them happy. Mm -hmm. Because once I've had a cup of tea with them and I get to see what, 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 uh, what's their, you know, reason to be in life, then that's going to help me as we pare down, as we look through their, their closets, go into the crawl space. Uh, the attic, we're trying to look at what is, do we need to distill down to the essence of who they are? Because that's what's going to go with them. Right. We're not going to ask them to get rid of treasures that they want to keep. Right, exactly. It's just, you know, things that, not, that aren't going to fit. Yeah. We're going to do up a floor plan with them. So we're going to see what their, say, two-bedroom suite at, uh, at the Dorchester is going gonna, is gonna to look like. And then we do up a detailed floor plan so we know what's going to fit. Sure, there's going to be some things, that, that armoire. There's going to be a few big things right. that might not fit. Right. And I'm not either going to find a, a buyer that's going to offer the money for that, or maybe they've got a, a niece or a daughter, someone who would love to have that, and we just need to set up a time when that uh, that can be yeah, delivered. They help so. categorize things, too. You know, it's kind of like, do you really need 20 pairs of black shoes still? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think so. And what about all those tablecloths and the linens? No, mm -hmm. because apart from having a nice little dinette set in your suite for maybe two people... You have no need to be in your suite making meals for 10 or 20. Right. If that's the case, we have private dining rooms that you're welcome to book out and use to entertain your large family or friend groups. And we have all that linen and cutlery at the Dorchester and all my other eight buildings. Right. So what happens, Teresa, when you've got a couple? And say, let's just, and I'm, I'm picking sides here. Let's say she is keen to go. She's ready. She's, she's had a lifetime of cooking and cleaning. Thank you very much. It's payback time. Yes. He, on the other hand, is kind of kind of connected to that stuff yes. and the house and just really isn't at all as keen. Nowhere close. So you've got a bit of a rift going on. How do you resolve that? Well, that, that does take a little bit of uh, creativity and some... Um, some talking to the family and talking to the uh, the couple involved. It's not uncommon that uh, one of the parties is less keen to move, and it may be. I think it's probably typical, isn't it? It's um, well, it's not untypical, that's okay. for sure. The, um, and it does uh, for some of the people uh, you invite them in and get them uh, associated with another couple who has had similar issues, know how you feel, and uh, they can share stories of h what they have found to be the solution. Um, I think you have to approach it slowly, and sometimes you involve an expert like Patrick right. and um, get into the house, do some home visits, um, just let people know what they're missing. 
sometimes I think people are um, staying stuck for the wrong reasons, and it can be partially that they don't know what they could be gaining. Right. Patrick, have you found yourself in the middle of these uh, conflicts where there's a little more enthusiasm from one than the other? Yeah. And you know what? There's a, well, there's a, I think food is such an important part of enjoying life. Mm -hmm. So if, if you can go over to the Dorchester, the White Cliff Park Place in Victoria and, and actually sam you know, try the food. And I'm not saying once. See if you can go three times and right. get a sense for their dinners, their lunches. I think that could be a, a pretty powerful, uh, persuasive thing for both the person who's excited and the and those who might feel a little uh, little reticent we about. We also a provide change. the opportunity, you know, apart from the uh, meals and and coming in for a tour, is the opportunity to come in and do a guest stay or a trial stay with right. us. Right. Right. I was like, going to ask you about that. Don't give up your home. So don't way to take away my question, Lydia. I'm, I'm kidding, Thank of course. You. No, no, it's 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 Welcome important. Welcome to the Lydia Miller show. No, 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 but it, 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 it's <laughs> <a> guest Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's important Miller to know. Time. It's important to know, though, that uh, these uh, uh, this option is available because a lot of I was going to ask you. It's a lot of it is it's just fear of the unknown. It's it reluctance to change. It is, mm -hmm. and change is causing a lot of fear. You know, I've been doing it this way for 50, 60 years. Why do I have to change? Right. And usually if there is a couple involved, a lot of times it's the one who's reluctant that needs to move the most. Interesting. Exactly. Because it's the partner looking after them. And when you talk about the trial stays, I've got two people at the Dorchester at least, maybe three, doing exactly that. Have They've come in without their furniture, just their belongings and right. uh, maybe their teddy bear or pictures or whatever is important to them. And uh, they're just testing the waters, kicking the tires. Uh, one lady, as I was leaving on Wednesday, had decided that it had worked. Her month uh, temp stay had really... Oh, she stayed a month? She stayed a Talk whole month. Talk about kicking the tires. She what a smart a woman. Good for and her. she's now, when I go back tomorrow uh, or today, if I can get back to Kelowna, um, I'll be showing her around and she'll be picking her suite and she's not even going to leave. Quite often when people do a trial stay, they will come and stay for a few days, go home right. and then bring their furniture. She does not even want to leave. So we're putting her up in another guest suite while we get our furniture out of the suite she's in and get her furniture in. I never did ask you, sorry Lydia, I never did ask you though, talk to us if, uh, for a moment, if you would, about the accommodation options at the Dorchester because you've uh, you've referenced two bedroom suites uh, and others. What What is the, what, and, and Patrick's talked about floor plans. Talk to us about the options available at the Dorchester. Well, our suites range from small studio suites, uh, a few different sizes getting bigger and bigger, small one bedrooms and uh, quite a number of different footprints or floor plans um, for the one bedrooms and two bedrooms. So we have a really good range of choices for people who uh, are specific about what they want. Right. Say Some 350 people. square feet up to 850? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Some people want balconies. Some people don't. Some people want bathrooms off bedrooms. Some people don't want people walking through their bedroom to get to the bathroom. Sure. Some people want to be on the fourth, some on the main, some east, some west. Right. So there's lots of... Lots of different uh, criteria for different different strokes for different folks. Right, and of course you get to bring as much furniture as can fit into whatever uh, selection you've made uh, for your suite. So Patrick, back to your visit to that house, and all of a sudden you've got the floor plan. Now, this person is going to move into Whitecliff or the Dorchester, uh, and they've made the decision. Mm -hmm. And now they've got a house full of stuff that they've got to shrink down to a one-bedroom apartment after a lot of years of accumulation. So how do you, what sort of tips or advice do you give in terms of selecting and prioritizing what to keep and what to let go of beyond what's going to physically fit or not? Well, Sterling, uh, it's easy for us sometimes to think in threes. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chat with my client and suggest, well, let's think of what do we want to keep? What are the treasures that we're, we're not going to let go of? Mm -hmm. And I, I will not be referencing the floor plan at this point. I'm still just thinking, I want to hear what you want to keep. Right. Then let's see, what do we want to donate either to people in your family? Or do you really support transition homes? Do you love uh, the Rotary Club? You know, What's your charity that you want to support with things you want to give away? Sure. And then what can we easily identify as either trash or things that we're going to recycle or right. just get rid of? And then we start working our way backwards through that list and it's it's surprising when a person starts to let go of something they have three blenders when they start to get rid of these things and they feel like ah, i'm supporting a, a young person leaving the foster care system right. great when they start giving things away uh, momentum builds and as they're seeing things leave their home they're starting to look forward to oh that's going to look perfect 
at the Dorchester. Right, right. Because this, th- this, this we are taking with mm-hmm. us. Right, exactly. So they start to, I can I can almost feel the uh, the excitement building as they get a sense of the fact that this isn't about me, you know, losing stuff. I'm more focusing on what I'm going to gain, what my liberated downsize is going to look like, right size, if you will. Well, you know, it, it's a great uh, strategy to uh, to to uh, consider the notion of of gifting, of whether it's the Salvation Army or the Saint Vincent de Paul Society or the United Way or whatever. You got a lot of stuff that is pretty darn useful to other people, and that negative, Therese, of oh, I'm going to lose all my stuff, I'm going to have to give up all my stuff, which is true to a certain extent can be turned into a very impressive positive by mm-hmm. making the, making sure the stuff you're not going to take is is well used and by it, family or by by charities exactly and in some cases um, everybody has a budget some people have more freedom with their budget and some people are um, really kind of constrained by their budget sure um, and I'll ask this to Patrick I do know of a couple who moved into the Dorchester and donated a lot of stuff to downsize and they actually got a tax receipt yes, that's true from yep. one of the charities yes. so um, you know that in in your world of every little bit counts that helps to soften the the any negative implications of giving things up yeah that's a really nice surprise for folks that they they perhaps weren't seeing that benefit coming whether it be the things that we help sell for them and that putting that cash back in their pocket they're excited about that the 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 getting a tax receipt wonderful and they also love it when they find that there's you know something they can really support that that you know circles back and makes them feel like ah all my knitting supplies that you know my my joints just don't want me doing that anymore right right now these people that are at a transition home right they're loving it mm-hmm. and and the thank you notes they get for the things they donate and that are they go a long way impressive stuff and by the way uh don't worry about that huge book collection you have Places like the Dorchester will be happy to get your books. We uh, just expand your library. We'll expand right? our library, right. or if you want to keep them, we can put them in a certain section so that you can still have access to them, but they don't use up space in your apartment. Right. And every year we have a big book sale, which we raise money for the. Uh, well, for instance, uh, CNIB um, received a thousand dollars from us one year. Great. And a number of other charities, too. Interesting. Our guests uh, from Rivera Retirement Living, Lydia Miller and Therese Elvis from the Dorchester in Kelowna. Lydia is our sales director for all of British Columbia. Also joining us on this episode of Boomer Life from Act Together Moving Services is Patrick Fagan. We'll be back with lots more right after this timeout. It's all about the baby boomer lifestyle. Boomer Life on AM 650.